Hi. I'm starting today with a sermon from my angel. My Nana was supposed to read my obituary when my time comes, but here I am reading hers. My grandchildren used to call me Uchacha when they were very young. Then they changed to Muthman and lately to Muth for granddad. Where do I begin? My angel is not there anymore. Her pranks on me was the most hilarious and it should be sealed in my heart forever. At an early age of two, she always wanted me to wipe her bottom after emptying her bowl. And when she shouts, Smooth, I finish. Muchacha, I finish. I am to go and wipe her. And on one occasion, she just dirtied my hand and laughed aloud with a giggle. If I'm sitting and watching TV, she used to run towards me and jump with her knees on both sides of my leg and my heart was always in my mouth. Then she would hug and kiss me. Last Christmas, she gave me a chauffeur, chauffeur's hat because I was her driver to take her here and there. Then she said, there is more and produce a plastic bag to carry the hat. During the coronavirus lockdown, I had long shoulder length hair and my angel said, I will trim it for you. She brought a dog hair shearing scissors and poured ice cold water on my head to wet it before cutting, she said. I nearly jumped out of my skin. It wasn't summer yet and we were sat outside. Because I couldn't cut my toenails, my nana would cut it for me. But in one occasion, she sat on my leg with her back facing me. After cutting, she painted all my toes pink with the conspiracy of her mother, grandmother and her sister. I still have a little pink left on my toes. Darling Naina, I feel your presence beside me. It's hard to say goodbye, but when my time comes and at the pearly gates, if the angels, are, angels ask me, which side do you want to go? I will say where my darling Naina is. I will always love you, my darling Naina. Okay, my angel. Well, here I'll start my day time. Like every, but every day else, every other day. Day time, sat in great uncle's big Chevrolet 12 cylinder car when we arrived in Mombasa. It carried all six of us, plus the luggage. Uncle driving and my friend Fix on his lap, teaching him to handle the steering wheel. He was just 12. The car rolled and took off to Kwajomfu on the mainland from Mombasa, where he was now living. My uncle came into some problem and had to sell his magnificent house by the sea, I was told. Then, uncle got a job in the coffee curing company as the manager there, and my dad was his assistant actually. My dad got the job as the manager and gave it to his uncle, my, uncle, my grand uncle. My dad was employed by the municipal office of Mombasa and waiting for the flats to be completed. Then we, we could move into a house. We moved into a house in Makupa, frantically trying to get me admitted to any God-forsaken school. The only school I could get admission was an Indian-run Kikowani Primary School in Mombasa. Standard 7. 
to enter the Kenya Asian pre preliminary exam to go forth into the high school. I had, I had joined the school when the school was at its final exam time. So I just trotted along for two months and picking up the English language back to my original state. I just wrote a mock exam with the test papers that was given just to see my capability. And if I had sat for it, I would certainly fail. But I just did it anyway and gave it to the teachers to mark them. And there was a Malayali teacher who would report my progress to my dad at a daily basis over a drink. Still, it hasn't clicked to anyone that my age was also going up. I was already 16 then. And now, when I am to sit for the exam, I would turn 17. And I would be 18 when I am to join the high school. It was 1955 when we moved from Okupa to Municipal Flats into B building, second floor. I passed the Kenya national exam, but I couldn't get a place in my, any higher studies. The best next thing was to get in, me into an apprentice scheme with, a, with an engineering firm. A Chinese gentleman, whom my father knew very well, took me to Southern Engineering Works. I was nearing 18 and too old to join the scheme. But a few strings were pulled by this gentleman who became my mentor. He started me with the basics just like the Karate Kid. When I saw the character in the Karate Kid, he just brought back a memory of a lifetime. I was picked up I, I was picking up knowledge from here and there, beside my tutor's teaching. The company thought I was a good invest and decided to send me to evening classes at the Mombasa Institute of Mombasa, of Muslim Education, sorry. You know, it was called Miami, in short. Then, and at that evening class, I came to know the lecturers, they were all apprentice past men who couldn't get a job in the United Kingdom and got jobs teaching in places like these institutes, institutes in Africa because they were white skinned. I knew most answers before they asked. I got all this information from a teacher called Pedder who was a lecturer there. He befriended me and asked me, where did I get such knowledge? And that I am wasted here and I should either go to the UK or any European countries. This was in my mind and I was given several opp opportunities by the directors of Southern Engineering to work in the engine rooms to obtain more knowledge. I became third engineer and set sail into local docking areas around Africa. It was 1958 when I sailed with an oil tanker bound for Madagascar. I was still in the role of a third engineer. We set sail about 3 p.m. in the afternoon with full cargo of petroleum which was refined from the Mombasa refinery bound for Mauritius and then to Mad towards Madagascar. My four hour shift had just finished and I was rela relaxing in a cabin with the second engineer. We shared a cabin. The captain came to our cabin and asked us to help in the engine room. He didn't know what was going on. Nobody knew. The chief engineer froze and wouldn't come out of his cabin. By now, with my mentor's teaching, I had obtained all the knowledge 
water shape and its function a night to remember is yet to come and so my friends the next chapter will be a night to remember so bye for now take care avoid covid and subscribe thank you very much